welcome to the Massive Capital webinar. I appreciate everybody showing up tonight. Um, we're going to start out with the presentation. Always feel free to put questions in the chat. We may or may not answer them at the time that we're doing it, but we will definitely get it to it. Um, we're also streaming now live on Facebook. We're getting really high tech here, so, so we're getting going. I'm going to put my contact info into the chat. Um, and so we're going to get started here. Um, Jasmine's going to be sharing the screen. So welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. All right. So we have a new tagline. Think massive, be massive, take massive actions. So we've had bits and pieces of our tagline, but uh, we're finally refined it now. So it's really important. We're very excited. Uh, we obviously want to make sure that we're thinking massive, being massive, and then taking massive actions. Um, we're going to ask everybody to stay muted during the presentation so it doesn't disrupt other people. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and get started here. So we are live on Facebook. I already said that. So this is an educational series. We are not accountants. We are not lawyers. We are not financial advisors. We are not retirement fund custodians. But we're going to try to provide you with the best information that we can based on our experiences and what we have learned, what we have done. So again, this is a learning session. And you'll, again, you'll have plenty of time for Q&A. To be honest, the questions is always sometimes more exciting than the content. If you're thinking it, five other people are thinking it. So don't be shy. So we're going to talk about why massive capital, the massive multifamily mastermind, investing gurus versus reality, the importance of group learning, beat the curve, and then massive value proposition. So again, a little bit about massive capital for those that are new. Massive capital is a vertically integrated real estate company. Massive capital specializes in ground up construction, and that's on the retail, flex space, industrial, self storage, and mixed use multifamily. Massive capital is an owner operator for value add multifamily assets. Between us and Realty One, we have 40 years for them, two years for us uh, experience. So on the left-hand side, you'll see that we're involved in equity. We do have a brokerage, which is a triple net. So a triple net brokerage is someone who's dealing with commercial tenants, mostly in retail, office, those types of things, not multifamily. Uh, we have a property management company that manages the same thing. Again, we do not have multifamily property management. We do development and we do construction, both metal, which again is more commercial, like retail buildings, industrial buildings. And then we're also working on doing wood um, construction, which is going to be more on the multifamily build the rent type situation. And then we do have an education program as well. On the top right, you'll see that we're very focused in Texas because we're all based in Texas pretty much. Um, but you, we see the markets there, but we do have two assets in Denver, Colorado, two assets in North Carolina, and two assets just south of Atlanta, Georgia. All of those are multifamily. And then you'll see Tampa and Phoenix. Those are places that we're actively looking to invest, but we're looking to do only triple net retail there. We're not looking at this point in time to do multifamily in those particular markets. We're not equipped for it. So at the top, you see Realty One. I'm going to start from the end. They have about $290 million in assets, about 500,000 square feet in retail. Uh, they have 250,000 square feet in retail center, which is much more mixed use and different things. And if you look at Massive Capital, we have $175 million in assets. We have 1,346 multifamily apartments. We're also developing X space, which is a 90,000 square foot mixed use industrial. It's a very, very exciting project in Houston. Should be starting construction next month. We're very excited about that. All right, the team. So you can see our team is expanding. This is a combination of the folks that are on the massive capital team and the Realty One team. So again, most of you will deal with folks on the top row, myself, Jasmine, Maria, Candice, um, Aska does our marketing, Jonathan Legal Counsel, 
Brenda, and then Linda, she's in the witness prep protection program. I'm only kidding. Someday we're going to get a picture of that poor girl. Um, and then Ellen, who's on the call with us at the second row on the far right, she's involved with all of our underwriting. We have Baskar, quite interesting. Uh, he's been working with Massive Capital for two years, and he's actually coming to our next meeting in Houston. And I believe it's his first time to America. I could be wrong. Um, so him and Asta are coming over. Um, so we had to get them work v or visas to be able to come. So super exciting to be able to meet people that for two years we just worked with virtually. And then most of the other folks are on the brokerage retail side. Ramis, um, he's kind of right over here. Ramis is really, so if you're getting a million texts from Massive Capital, Ramis is the guy that you, you can thank for that. Um, and I know some folks don't thank us for that, but we want to make sure you don't miss anything. Um, our goal is to be able to educate as many people as possible. And then our principals. So on the top left, we have Sharar. He is joining us tonight. Um, so he's going to do a portion of the presentation. He's just running a little bit late. Sanjay, who doesn't normally do these presentations, but he's coming tonight. Um, he's going to be showing up on a slide. We're going to use an example of him. Mike on the bottom here. Mike's usually here, but he's actually traveling back from a Grant Cardone event that he went to. And then Bo, Pat, and Alexis, they are all the leaders of the Realty One group. So they're the ones that I want to refer to them, I guess, as managing partners of that group. So together with the six folks, they manage massive capital as a whole. So this is super exciting. We have our third virtual conference coming up. Um, Brenda, do you, oh, I get the codes here. Hold on a second. Last time I didn't have the codes and I was so embarrassed. So we have special codes for you guys tonight. So if you log on using the QR code there, or, and then if you wanna get a free general admission ticket instead of $49, you can enter the code free ticket and that's because you showed up here to get educated. And then if you want to upgrade to a VIP, which I highly recommend because it gives you a lot more access for networking room, copies of the recording, you can put in the code webinar and you will get $100 off the VIP ticket. So it reduces the price down to only $49. This is a full day where we bring in a lot of the folks that we work with and we share information. So it's on February 16th. It's all day long, but again, if you buy the VIP ticket, if you miss a session here and there because you have uh, other things you need to do, then you can get the recordings of this, but uh, we're super excited. This is our third one, and then for those of us that um, were before, we did have an in-person, but we had some issues with it, so we postponed that one to the fall, and I think we did a bad job communicating that, so sorry for anybody who scrambled out and bought it, but uh, Putting on an in-person is a lot different than a virtual, and it was our first time, and we really wanted to do it right, so we moved it to be later this year. But this is going to be action-packed. We've got really good reviews from folks that have come to our events. All right, so this is a little bit of the deal flow that Massive Capital has done. So we're going to go through this pretty quickly. So starting at the bottom, we did a new land development deal here in Austin. Amberwood Apartments in Dallas, Warner Robins in Georgia. That's a two-property portfolio. X space in Houston. So that one is being built. It's a 90,000 square foot high end industrial uh, mixed use. So basically what I call it is it's a workplace for eccentric rich people. So you can actually put your Ferrari in an elevator and park it in your office if you want. And people do. We have one here in Austin. It doesn't have an elevator like this one, but it's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, then we have an asset that we just closed on in Denver, Colorado. We have a AAA retail in Conroe, Texas, just outside of Houston. Uh, we have a new development in Katy, Texas. And then we did a multifamily value add that we closed in North Carolina. We bought 10 acres for an industrial development in Houston. So right now it's going through the entitlement. And that one will be one of our more mixed use ones. So we'll have uh, much more of an industrial flair. And then we also have a triple net here in Austin called uh, Harris Ridge. And that one's starting construction next month. Um, and we're finalizing a PSA for a deal in Houston. We have two LOIs pending in Dallas. And then our final one is our Horizon investment opportunity. So this one is an awesome deal. We still have some open spaces for investment. So this one is offering a 2.11 multiple of your money 
18% IRR, um, 7% preferred payment. So book a call with anyone on the Massive Capital team to get some more information about this investment. Um, it's, it's a really, really good property. I'm super excited. In fact, I was just visiting it yesterday. Um, it's a great property. Uh, Massive Capital folks are going to put their contact info in the chat. If you're interested in this particular deal, just let us know. Um, and I'm going to go to the next slide here. So we're going to talk a little bit about the pathway to GP. Um, and I'm going to start this off and then hopefully Sharar will get here by the time his uh, portion is. So one of the things we really want to talk about is that social media gurus, they have nice videos. They tell you all kinds of things about becoming a sponsor of deals, but versus the reality. So I don't know how many folks have signed up or done this where they say, join our three-day course, find a deal, let the property manager do all the work and sit on the beach collecting money. I know they don't quite word it that way, but it's pretty close. If you find a deal, the money will follow. Anybody who is involved in capital raising right now knows that it's hard work to get the money in there. Create a database, use our email templates, and the money will come pouring in. Contact a broker, tell them your buy box, and they will send you the best deals, okay? They are not sending you the best deals. They are gonna send you the deals that everybody else passed on, right? This is what happens. And I'm gonna be honest, this list was created from my reality. When I first started to get in here, these were things that I believed. And so we, when we created this list, these were things that I reboot. Call a direct mail property owners. They'll be more than happy to sell you their property, even with owner financing. So again, does this happen? Absolutely mm -hmm. it happens. It is not the normal. Become a real estate professional and everything will be great. You will never pay taxes again. After your first deal, you will never be able, you'll never have to work again, okay? Um, that is what people tell you. That's what they say is going to happen to you. Um, and it is definitely not the truth. All right, so we're gonna talk about beat the curve, reduce the learning curve and the importance of group lending. And if you see, oh, Sharar is in okay. the waiting room. Ah, we should let him in. Are you, in? Are you there, Sharar? Yes, I just locked it. Awesome. Thanks. So it was perfect timing. We got right to your slide. Wow. So, so. I mean, hey, <laughs> I picked up my kids, picked up dinner. Mommy's not doing well. So it was perfect timing. That's that's <laughs> good. Thank you. So one thing uh, that I always say for those of you that are new, put your seatbelts on. So this is where, okay, full disclaimer. Thank you, Trevor, for setting it up, right? Me, Sanja, Mike, we all are recovering engineers. So we tend to take everything and processify everything, right? So if you look at project perspective, when we deliver big projects, there's always the learning curve. Learning curve means I got to go figure that out. And, you know, the more we have to go figure that out and hire the project and a size, uh, the cost of figuring out is, you know, it's, it's higher. So if you look at that from the multifamily perspective or anything that we have to do, there, is, there we have the initial learning curve. So when you're coming to the, you know, a new market, new domain, new industry, whatever it is, that, that learning curve is very expensive. So what we, what we asked the question is, hey, how do we shorten the learning curve or what type of learning curves you know, there are? And sometimes is it the individual learning is better or is the group learning is better, right? So we'll give you a little bit more analytics on how we take a look at it, some frameworks. Then we'll give you some examples and go from there. Okay, let's go to the second slide. All right. So again, uh, it's on the top one, uh, top left that we call it diminishing returns. And then the bottom one is the increasing returns, right? Again, learning curve. Uh, we have two axes is the performance and the time. So early on, the diminishing return, it takes, you know, it's a short uh, time span to learn. But once you learn, you learn. There's not much of an incremental benefit to it. And the bottom one on the left one, it takes a long time to learn. And once you learn, once you spend a lot of time, then the learning curve happens. And once you go through that first hump of the learning curve, it is done, right? So typically, uh, the diminishing returns are easier to learn. The value is in repetition. Uh, so it has, if I'm the project owner or if you're the project owner, it allows room for mistakes because mistakes are less expensive. Uh, it can be done solo. Uh, no large team is required. Uh, typically, it's that single family residence and the flips or single family rentals of flips, one, two, and three, low quantity volume. That's the type of you know, learning curve it is, right? You want to buy a house? 
you go buy it, and you take the loan, do everything else. So the bigger pocket bar strategy, that is it typically is a diminishing return. Once you learn it, been there two, three, four times, then you kind of sort of know the game. And if you want to play solo, it's perfectly fine. And uh, so the second one is the increasing return uh, that um, kind of see. And the activities may not be that easy to learn. Uh, it, the value is in domain know-how. Uh, uh, you need some deep expertise. And then mistakes are made early on typically. And you know you can handle the mistakes within the project cost, uh, so, but you need a team. And and you know the smaller portfolio, or, you know. So so if you think about, it, you are a professional flipper. You flip five, six, seven homes a year, and you do deep rehabs. That's an expertise. You gotta know where to buy the kitchen sink, where to buy the flooring, where to get the electrical GC and the plumbing GC. They are one text away, one phone call away. That's that. It takes a little bit, right? You do one flips, then you do two flips, then you know the wholesale market, then you know ten whole wholesalers. It needs some domain expertise. So high volume. I don't know how high is high, but uh, at a higher frequency, single, you know, if you do single family flips, that is that type of increasing returns. So, and if we do Airbnb, a whole bunch of them, that's increasing returns. So that's that's how typically we take a look at it. Uh, so, you know, single family flip, residential, a smaller multi, one or two, uh, you know, you want to do all by yourself. That's the learning curves uh, that we see. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. And it gets interesting. Uh, now we're going to go a little bit more. So the S carp. Uh, so, and some of you guys in the corporate side, the S carp is always there. Uh, it is. It takes a lot to create the performance alongside with the time. So you have to initial, and you have to put in some time. Then you have a learning curve. Then you keep applying the time. Time. Then you become a mastery. Then it kind of tapers out. Uh, so the S carbs are good for and you know, easy to get started, but it requires a very fast execution. Uh, typically for new job or role or businesses where competition exists, right? We go in and we compete. Multifamily, we go in, we compete. There's somebody else bidding against us at all time. And that's what it, uh, it doesn't allow much of a room to make mistakes, right? I make an assumption uh, in my model to come up with the price, hypothetically $15 million. There's somebody who's making an assumption to come up with the price, $15.5 million. They will win. And in the team, uh, that's where the multifamily new investor, smaller syndicating team, they come in. But early on, we fail, we fail, we fail, then boom, we kind of hit it. And then you do a whole bunch of deals, then you get to the mastery side of it. Uh, so typically, that's where most of the syndicate, um, I would say, and a smaller syndicating team will kind of come in small to me. Uh, I don't know, in a life cycle, you have done somewhere between two to five uh, syndicating uh, syndications. Um, that's, that's there. And that last one is the complex curve. This is where it gets it is complex. You are building a company, you're building a team, you're you know, not looking at the deal, you're looking at technical expertise and you're running six, seven, eight different things at the same time. So if you start a startup, wanna grow, if you're building an organization, that's your complex curve, which is time gotta spend. It's, it's, which is true, more you do, more you find out, right? Uh, it's a typically the business with many verticals and it's for multifamily operators who typically will own more than 500, 1,000 doors. Mistakes are made. Again, it doesn't allow to make too much, you know, too many mistakes. You need a really solid team to grow. This is where full-time syndicators, the managing deals, one vertical, you know, the expertise, sourcing debt equity, that's another vertical, you know, to build expertise. Asset management, that's an expertise. Disposition, that's an expertise. And you're running everything in one house, right? And that's where the complex curve happens. So us, massive perspective, we are going through that complex curve at all time because we are sourcing deals. And then all of a sudden we got to build a finance organization, right? Or underwriting, you know, we have three uh, FTEs, full-time employees, they do underwriting. Then, uh, then we're, we're managing, you know, deal sourcing. That's a broker relationship. We're underwriting the brokers as they're underwriting us. That itself uh, takes a lot of time. And then when we go compete, we got to have a differentiating factor. Then sizing out the debt. I know we had a session here. Not all the lenders are made the same. And figuring that out, it's different. Then you go negotiate with the lenders to give you a little better rate. That's a loan. It's a full-time job. So we have one full-time resource. All he does manages those lender relationships. So we manage about 22, 23 banks relationship directly. And then uh, with other direct lenders. Then equity. 
it's itself it's a business right folks who are raising equity you know how hard it is how t- how tough it is and how much of a work that goes in not only find a good syndicating team then making sure that you know the deal itself is good on top of that then you raise and then you continue the relationship right so on a larger full time with the team that's where the complex car happens now if you take the framework and you go to the next slide that's okay and that's where you ask the question, okay, what's in it for you or what's in it for me? And uh, we get the learning curve, we get the S curve, we get the complex curve, but then how do we flatten it? And that's the thing, right? Uh, so what we call it, I always love the strategy on the left, then it goes to the right. On the left side, our goal, that if you know the rhythm of the game, then we got to figure out what the best way to come in, spending the least amount of time and spending the least amount of money, right? In terms of mistakes. But we all also define a unit of success, whatever that could be, solve backwards. So we believe incremental learning is good. Then I go buy one house, then I go buy 10 houses, then I got 10 houses, I got it. But then I want to buy a 20 unit multifamily. Okay, I'm going to sell that. I want to buy 50 units. And then from the 50, I'm going to go buy 100. But guess what? Every single thing takes time. To go to one to 10 takes a year and a half, two years. From 10 to a multifamily takes about a year. You're already about four, three, three, four years into the game. By the time you touch the 100, it's 10 years, right? It's six, seven, eight years. It's a lot of time. So solve backwards. Say I need to, and I want to buy this, or I want to raise that, or I want to invest, whatever. Then you back solve it. And then individualize your part in a learning curve. Our philosophy is that everybody's unique in their own way. And you need to realize your uniqueness and play off of the uniqueness. Like in the corporate culture, what we call it is, you know, well, you know, whenever you do that yearly thing, they say the top three things you're good at, top three things you're bad at, and go improve the top, you know, that three, three things that are not very good at. That's one school of thought. Our school of thought is find out what you're good at and become so good than the other three that you're not good at, and it's okay to have those. And then again, invest in tools. Gone in those days, Excel, text, and everything else, you must invest in tools. It's just the expectation to play the game, establish a timeline, and get mentors. I struggled with the number seven, and I'll, I'll give you my personal story. I struggled to get mentors, right? Hey, engineers, top of the class, Fortune 10 company, we moved up for the organization. I don't need mentors, but I was dead wrong. Uh, I ended up signing for like six, seven, eight mentors now. So get a mentor. Then on the right side is a little bit more, like, you know, in whoever that you work with, have a shared value, then soft factor, have complementary skills, have a different style. And then on top of that, it's your strategy and a structure and your system. So, so treat yourself as a as an organization, even though you're an investor uh, on the LP side, or even though you're a GP side. If you don't treat yourself as a business, as a startup, uh, it's gonna be tough. It's a long, open-ended way to go, and that is typically just a lengthy path, lonely path, and takes a lot of time. And there is one question on number one, define a unit of success. They, they, success. they asked a little bit more definition on that. So it's a define a, you know, that's a broad question, right? You know, definition of success is different for anybody. Uh, I can use my personal oh, Word document here. <laughs> Thank you. So, uh, so that's fine. So let's say when I started, right, my first year, I thought I'm going to buy something, right? And I did some calculation and it says, you know, if you buy one house, you'll be all right. I, I went to bigger pockets. I read some books. I was gunning down. So my definition of success was one, one single family, right? I have my friends. Uh, their definition of success was they want to deploy an X amount of dollars. So I don't know what your definition of success is, but have a definition. Solve in terms of a quantity of properties or quality of teams or quantity of dollar amount, something. So that's, that's what I would say. So if you're a multifamily side, if you're an LP, then you should say, hey, look, I looked at my earnings. I talked to my CPA. I understand what my net taxable income is. And I need to do X amount of LP investments. To do three LP investments, I got to know five and I have to underwrite five GP teams. And to, for me to write underwrite five GP teams, I need to go attend 20 webinars. And that's your you know, definition of success. And if you're a sponsor team, then, you know, I'm going to do five deals, that category. And then what if I do two? That's a success. So long way of saying everybody's unique, have your own definition, but have a unit of success. 
Perfect. Thank Duran, you. Hopefully it helped. Thank you. All right. So the whole corporate stuff, we talked about it. Now the question is what's in it? How do you take that and get into the GP side, right? The pathway to GP process, right? So we'll, we'll switch from a LP and you know, we kind of go to the GP side of it. Then it's a very good question. I will answer as I go through. Uh, so. so the question is, we'll take it from the learning curve. We'll take it from the team. And now how do we apply in the real estate, right? So let's, let's get the second one. Okay. So our tagline is massive learning. Learning got to be there, right? You know, and we don't, nobody should guarantee any success. Like if you go to B school, we always say, I don't guarantee you a move up or a higher salary, but I guarantee a lower probability of failure. In this case, whatever that you do, it should increase the probability of success, but there's no guarantee. So Sanjay, he, he loves to do crazy things. Once a year, he go climbs the mountain. I'm like, we don't have enough mountain to climb here, right? So he went Mount Everest and he went to the Kilimanjaro this year and he climbed it. So if you click it one more time, so the question becomes, would you like to hike Kilimanjaro without training and roadmap? Think about it. That's his first time. Does it make sense, right? So it's exactly what we talked about. In the real estate, every single that we buy, it is a risk that we are buying. It's a mountain that we're climbing. But would I go in and buy something you know, without a training, right? Thank you. So let's go to the next slide. It gets better. All right. Sanjay and his friend went to Kilimanjaro, but this is the trick. It took 10 team members to take two new members to the Kilimanjaro. 10 to two. Yes. If he can, I mean, and could he die by himself? He'll be dead twice, right? Or his increase of dying is higher. It took 10 people to get to that. So multifamily is the same way. If you think you can do all by yourself, you can. And I, and I, a full thing of it, but the way you're going to get to the top all by yourself, I wish you the very best, right? So it is tough. And then this is what you do. Now, what happened? Those people came in, they've been there, done that 10 hundred times. They coached him right, and they knew exactly how a version of, because, you know, they have seen hundreds of, you know, Sanjay's, right? They know how they behave or at what point in phase, how they're going to struggle. So they primed him, they prepped him, they took him to the right spot, and boom, he went in with the right training, right team members. And when he was in that little stressed out mode, they came and helped him into that spot. And that's why we call it flattening the learning curve. All right, so here we go. So GP, right? So we talked about the team and the GP. So on the left-hand side, again, think about this. We have done 15 deals last two years and we have underwritten more than 400 properties and 15 only under massive plus massive plus all of us together, we have done many deals, right? So there's a pattern that we go through and we build 15 relationships. Some worked, some didn't, right? And, and, and there's a way to have understanding the relationships. So once you put all of them together, so the way our, our workflow is that look, we have to develop, design and deliver every single project that we do, especially for GP, you must know about that. And then to do that, you gotta go on the right side. Running a company, right? If it's because, you know, I want all of you guys to think about buying apartments, it's like buying a business. We're gonna buy a $20 million company, a $60 million company, a $50 million company. And LPs are hiring us for five years to turn that property around or business around, increase the revenue and exit up. And that starts with a business plan. Then you go to team development, then you get into performance. So, you know, my, my favorite thing, if I underwrite a deal, I always look at the GP team first. I make sure they're taken care of. Then I identify what team or individual is gonna hire and fire the property management company. Then I send him to Mount Kilimanjaro for six months or Hawaii for six months. If the deal can run automatically, then that's a team. Otherwise it's an individual one man show. If I'm okay with it, I'll invest. If I'm not, I will not, right? So at the bottom side, this is where it gets really, really interesting. Now from the massive side, we've been through final execution 15 times and so many times of trial run. So we typically have a business plan, market selection on the top, the investor pack. We have a framework that we use. We have a template that we use. It's a cadence. And then we have a team. And uh, for us, we strongly believe that we do not build a team when it's a game time. Think about we're going to play it in a, in a game, right? We got 90 days or 90 minutes. I can't 
start the game and then hire my offense, hire my defense, and you know, hire my coach and hire everybody else and then try to win the deal. We always practice after, you know, before the game. So we raise in between the deals. We build relationship in between the deals. We build, we simulate a lot of things and you should do the same. And then all of our teams, we worked with them before. We know how they think. They know how we think. And everybody read through the PPM, so they cannot talk. Uh, so we have a team, standard team that we go to on the performance side here. And we got the deal flow right here on this side. Then we got the capital on this side. Then once the deal flow and the capital flow happens, there is a closing. There's a closing coming up for us. And then once we close, we get into the operations mode. On one side, you're running the assets, operating liquidity for the next five years, making sure the cash is good. Then you have a sale. On the other side, you take the cash and the principal return. So now multifamily, it's a group learning. You got to have a team. Can you do the whole thing by yourself? Yeah. Then you stress thin, right? Then what happens if you do two or three or four? You really don't have time, right? That's why finding a team early on, build the trust, build the confidence, have a capable team so you can do deal number two, three, or four with them. And it is true if we do the, if we start small with the, and a two or three people team, your share is tiny, but guess what? That tiny will evolve into much bigger efficiently if you can build the right team. So back to the question that you know Dan was talking about, UNW2, start with your time. We all have the same set 24 hours. And you know, we all work 40 hours plus 20 hours drive or 10 hours drive, whatever, 50, 60 hours we have committed. So then you look at the deal performance and you say, if I'm W2, which I was, that how do I play in? Yeah, I can run asset, but I cannot pick up a phone call from the asset manager or property manager at nine o'clock or something happened. But guess what? I can play on the capital side. I can work nights. I can work weekends. I can do ad hoc text. It's, it's in the raising side, right? But then I come in and manage some of the investor relations, right? So when you look at it, look at from the time perspective, look at from the time commitment that you have to do. Again, this is a five years of job. It's not you want to help. Uh, you come in today and go out tomorrow. It doesn't work that way uh, because we have a, we are committed to our LPs. And then from the five years, you need to be able to say, hey, I allocated five hours, 10 hours, 15 hours every week or every month for the particular project to enhance the performance of the project. So that's that's how I take a look at it. So this is another view of the, you know, how the workflow happens. Uh, for us, it's a lot of work to do. Just imagine buying a $20 million company, right? It takes a lot. From deal sourcing to PSA, and oftentimes residential side, somebody will send you an email, hey, I got a house. You look at the R, drop an offer, two minutes, you're in and out. But multifamily is not like that. And there's a lot that goes into the PSA. You can underwrite, put the LOI, put the PSA, put the contract, put the legal team, whole bunch of stuff. Same. Once it goes in the contract or PSA, physical inspection, insurance, contract to close, legal docs, make sure the SEC attorney is looking at the transaction attorney, make sure the insurance is talking to your lender requirements, whole bunch of stuff that goes in. That's, if you run two deals, contract to close, that's almost full time. Then we have a loan guarantor and debt. Not all, not all partners are made the same. Not all balance sheets are made the same. Not all bankers are made the same because they all don't underwrite the same way. So there's a lot of nuance that goes in it here. And then in between this balance sheet and at risk regard with the closing, closing itself, it's an art. And every deal is unique. And every deal, as of now, every deal, something is going to go wrong a day before the closing. It just happens, meant to happen, will happen, and go along with it, right? So putting it together, it's an art by itself. Then you get the equity investor, right? Somebody trusted us, gave us the money, and we owe them a communication. We owe them a performance. So this is the whole ordeal of work by itself. Then the asset management. It's not easy. Then the education side of it. So this is how we run it. This is how we take a look at it. And this is how we have processified the whole thing. So if someone says, hey, I want to help, we pull up this one and say exactly what bucket. Then put your time commitment in it. Then we kind of go. So last year we have created, I think, 14, 15 general partners for the first time. And the way we partner with the operators is that, hey, if your operator already bought two or three assets, uh, then usually if the partners 
everything doesn't pan out right, then you have to shop around for the partners. So we try to be the strategic partnerships. That means if we work with some partners, we want to make sure that we give them all of our balance sheets, all of our team process, so we can accelerate their journey of buying or building the portfolio while they focus on only asset management. Same thing for the equity partners. If someone is professional raiser, uh, then we we come back and say, hey, you don't have to find 10 people. Come underwrite us. Come underwrite our process. We have enough deals so we can make your and investors happy. Give them a balanced portfolio. So that's that's how we operate. Again, this is a lot. Uh, we're going to have the, uh, your Q&A, and then we can go from there. Now, this is a snippet. Uh, I'm not going to talk detail about it. So for us, when someone comes to Johnson Mastermind, we take them through a 90, minute, a 90 days roadmap. Uh, everything they go through uh, via process, we test them. And what we try to do for first 90 days, you, we try to separate out what I feel like I should be doing versus what I am good at doing. And then we say, hey, and go go do whatever that you want to do. But we try to polarize by pushing them through every single process. Uh, if someone says, I want to run an asset, we have 34 deals in the pipeline, 35 deals in the pipeline. Go underwrite 10 of them. Go. Then once you underwrite 10 of them, you'll know what your strengths are. If someone says, I'm really good at you know raising billion dollars, here we go. We have five deals. Go practice. Right? So this is what we try to do. Bring in early on, grow through the grant process. It's just like engineering school, right? Everybody comes in. Then we go through those filtering classes. Then we put you on the other side and say, hey, figure out your specialty and we kind of go. So let's go to the next one. Next one is nice. I like that one. Oh, oh no, no, sorry. Uh, so this one is a typical, oh, we kind of broke it down. If someone says five years down the way, I want to create a value of 1 million. I mean, on the left-hand side, you can be the asset manager, deal finder, sign the loan, debt, everything. Buy 30 units, increase the rent by 50 bucks. It'll take you two, three years to get there. Then, you know, that's your income right there. Then you increase the value by 300 grand. You do three deals per year, you can make a million. So multifamily is extremely tough, but it's not that tough, depending on how you're structuring yourself out. And multifamily, it's not a get rich, get rich quick. It takes, you know, three to five years of first cycle. Once you go through the first cycle, it gets really, really fun. First cycle is the always toughest one. Every almost a lot of people will die out on the first cycle because it just takes time, three, four years to get there. But once you get through the cycle of it, it gets really interesting and you get the meaningful earning to say, I want to do what I want to do. That's what it is. And most of our data point for you guys, most of our I know um, students or out within our mastermind, uh, they all come from corporate world or and or they have done heavy volume of single family. So they've been in the game for a while. And they want to just accelerate the whole journey. That's where we are. And someone on the right side, I have a W-2. And a lot of people, I'm a broker dealer or whatever you have it. I am good with the investor relations. I can help with the underwriting a little bit. And then, hey, I can actively participate uh, while I bring in some money as well. And then you kind of go from there. And that's another calculation that we have. So let's go to the next slide. Cool people answers. Of course, I love it, Jasmine. This is awesome. Okay, this is our deal flow. Uh, so what and everything that we talked about here based on the pain and the love and the fun work that we went through. So on your left hand side, this is we use a software called uh, our website called Monday.com. Uh, we have underwritten about in our archive about 600, a little over 600 properties. We have two under contract and everything else. On your right hand side, you can see everybody's name, all of our uh, part of our you know, mastermind groups. And that's what it is. So our deal flow is solid. We are continuously underwriting and making offers. Uh, we expect 2024 acquisition to provide solid returns because 2024 will be a very tough market to buy, but it's a very calibrated market to buy. Last three years, uh, what we taught everybody or most of the GPs learned for last, I don't know, last four years is that you can buy risk, market will give it to you, it's going to wash your mistakes, and you go. So it becomes almost like a guaranteed return, right? Any mistakes we have done on the operational market moved so much I got paid, investor got paid. All of a sudden, I'm going to stomp my chest by saying that I gave you 30% return. But the reality is I gained, I delivered 10%, market gave me 20%, right? But now market is on the other side. So it's clear who the operators are. And then, but we believe that this year will be a very good year, very calibrated year to buy assets. Going into the deals, it's going to be skinny. 
because you know high interest rate and everything else. But it's a it's it's a long play that three four five years out we should be able to write that upside of it as you go. So that's that's how we take a look at it. On the right side again, um, it's a hands on thing that we do. It's a learning by doing. And I, and I can go to YouTube University, look at all the cool videos. But end of the day, if I don't draft the LOI, end of the day, if I don't call the broker or if I don't call the other you know, attorney and negotiate on the phone, that's different. So that's that's where we go. And behind it, we have a CRM fully. I mean, that thing is, I mean, we got a Bentley out of the CRM right now. It's AI integrated. You all get our text, uh, automated email sequence and everything else. And we also give that to our uh, mastermind partners. They just copy our system and they use it, at least a version of it. All right, let's go to the next one. One, one thing I wanted to point out here too, because you know we talked about it in what I'm going to call the what what they're telling you. So if you look at this, 631 deals, 23. Okay, so this concept of go find a broker, send him your buy box, he'll send you the best deal. Um, you know, 600 deals to close to, to, to do 33. Um, it, it's, this is a huge delta, right? You got to kiss a lot of frogs uh, to find your prince or princess. Classic example. Just imagine brokers are being brokered. Their job is to sell you and push you to the highest dollar ticket, right? They are, they are incentivized to do that. That's the fiduciary duty. Now, when we go, right, at the first time, Ah, just send it, call a broker, call them 10 times. Broker is looking at you who you are. And some brokers are good. They got a good heart. They've been at the game for a long time. They understand. They will you know, push you to in a good spot and they will do it. Polar opposite, some brokers are looking for blood. They know once the moment they smell you're brand new and you're emotionally motivated, they'll squeeze the life out of you. So your job is to understand who the brokers are as well. And, you know, so you have to play the game. And then the question becomes, again, it's a competitive market. And you go versus Trevor goes versus I go versus somebody else goes, who the broker is going to give it to you guys? Either who has the most amount of money, solve for the price, or who has the certainty of closing? In between, not a whole lot, right? So that's the way it's interesting. So for us, when someone comes into a mastermind, first thing first, you don't have to build the relationship. Screw it. We already built it. Go reach out. And we'll wonder why to give the feedback. So example today, they said the best thing. I had an email today. So is uh, we talked to a seller and seller said, you can buy the property. We've been talking to the seller for almost two months now. And uh, this is our third call with them. Seller said, first they said 55, which had 48 million. Then seller said 52, you can have the deal. Then they also go, yes, I, I we have a bro uh, broker from Dallas area, big shop. And I... I think they're going to go to market at 55, but I, I don't think today that they're going to get it because the price is 52. The reason being seller is saying is seller owns a financing company. They do debt brokerage. They are very sophisticated. Now, tonight, about an hour ago, the broker sent me an email. Hey, I seller asked me to reach out to the price is 60 million. Broker thought I'm an idiot. And he's thinking we're going to pay 60 million for the price. Broker knows he doesn't price at 60 million. And that's a big broker shop. And so you have to qualify all the BS that you're going to go through to find out what the deal is. And that is not that, that is not easy. So that's the back to Trevor's point. F1 phone call, they got the flavor of it. There you go. Pay me $10 million extra, right? So uh, again, this is the version of that. So for us, what we do is the high quality uh, education for us. And you, know, you and I, all of us are in the same boat. And so we need learnings and we learn. Then the coaching and the mentoring then transparency, uh, it's a big thing for us. Uh, for us, you know, we like people first and, and what we call it is the technical skill, then the relationship, then anything else, right? One is not the play, the play is the good set of people with a good heart and then you go do the work together side by side. And once you can build the friendship, they will watch out for you and they will do things we can even wonder, right? So transparency is a big thing. If it sucks, it sucks. If it's good, it's good. And it takes a lot to say it, but we believe that's the way to go. And then enabling partners uh, for us, it's, it's the partners first and then us, right? One of the biggest thing, what we call it, it's a single family mindset is me, me, and me, right? I get it. I flip it. I rehab it. I keep it. But a true game is all about you. Because if I can solve for you, if I can make sure you are taken care of, 
then when you do well, I know I'm going to do well. But if I start with me, I'm going to get to you, right? So for us, it's a true mindset is enabling partners. So share as much as we know, give them as much as support as you can, because we are building friendships and friends will do things down the way. So that's that's how we look at the that one. And then let's go to the next slide. That's going to be a di different version of it, like uh, why uh, we add value by landowners for new construction, we partner with them. For existing operators, we have our own asset management software now, and it's really cool. It gives us the view of the asset without even talking to anybody. Then the last thing is the education. MMS capital is our CRM. It's cheap. If you don't have a CRM, have one. And then if you go back to the next slide, uh, this is how we believe we should operate the tools, process, and hands-on. You gotta have tools. It's tough. Most like when I as I signed up personally as a group, Massive Capital signed up with about seven, eight different mentorship groups. Some has this, some doesn't have this, some pushes that. So for us, we combined everything. We said, hey, for us to grow, we gotta know the terminology, we gotta know the training, we gotta have a CRM automation integrated website. And if I don't have an underwriting tool, I don't know how to underwrite. And we should not buy a 20, 30, 40, 50 million dollar company having a watered down version of underwriting. Those markets are gone. So back of the envelope is good if you buy 20, 30 units, not when you buy 200 units. So underwriting, we have three different kinds of underwriting depending on the price. We use Red IQ. All of our mentors get that one and our mastermind partners. Then we use CoStar. Co All of our you know, partners get it. They get it for, for six months to a year. It comes with it. Then we do weekly investor calls, weekly capital raising call, weekly tech calls. Because what happens if 10 people are going through the same journey, we're seeing 10 different versions of it. We can pick it back with each other. Let's go to the next one. After tools, it's the you know, support system. It's real. We work hard. Everybody works hard. <laughs> and, and we want you to work hard if you join us, right? And I want to get a complaint that we have too many calls. Because early on, it's a lot. So we have recordings for videos. We have document walls. And those 600 underwriting that we have done, that's a database that we have that everybody can get it. So we can underwrite now using our own database that we have. Then we have mentoring calls with guests who are doing bigger deals. Then we have ops call, asset management call, capital raising call. And we go through all of our assets side by side. So you get a flavor of it. And then the last one is the hands-on. Uh, you know, live deal access. You know, and we underwrote so many deals in Houston, so many deals in Dallas. We have their actuals, the T12. So the best way to come for us, we just go to our database and we say, hey, let's look at what other assets that we underwrote within that area and see what the cost structures look like. So we can proxy an actual cost, right? And site visits, then, you know, our contract to close process. Like we have a call set up where we run all the contract to close at the same time. At some point, we have three properties under contract three different types. Where can you find where you're looking at how to close three different types of asset at the same time where they're having 20 different kinds of problem. Once you go through two times, you have seen enough to say, you know what, I understand the trend of it, the SEC docs and whole thing of it. So it's a pretty hands-on uh, work with us. Let's go to the next one. I think that's where you ended. It's a lot. Uh, so for us, and a lot of people ask, what's the cost of it? Uh, so for us, it's about $20,000. Uh, it comes with the tools, uh, Red IQ, uh, full access for a year, as long as you're here with us. Cold Star, I believe, for almost a year. Then also comes with the CRM. So we'll get you up and running to a point. You spend less, less time on you know, tools and processes, more time on the value add, whatever the value add it is uh, on your end of it. And, and there you go. So all over the team, I like this one. It was a lot. I appreciate you guys listening in. It was a lot of information, but I wanted to cover it to give you a framework of it. It gets posted on the YouTube and I'll stop talking open for questions and all sorts of questions. Thank you, Trevor. Yeah, no, it's great. Thank you. So any any questions you feel, put them in the chat. Unmute yourself. Um, uh, it's 20,000 for the year. So follow up in terms of, uh, Gleb, you want to ask a question a little bit more, follow up with with brokers or investors or deals with brokers, yes. So thank you. So think about this way. Your time is precious. It's your time 
then talking to, calling all the brokers, and then all this other stuff. The way we take a look at it is have a platform. Call one time, call two times, then put them on a CRM. Call two times, put them on a CRM. Make, the, make sure that they know your voice and a name. And then all of a sudden you have a list of 20, 30, 40 brokers. And then what we call it, you talk one too many. Well, not one one anymore. It takes 30, 40 minutes, one one You out of time when you do it, call 10 times. You do one too many. And the one too many will be, you do what you do. Then once a month, once a, and every two weeks, you send them a newsletter or an email by saying all the deals you're working on. So all of a sudden you are talking to them without talking to them using a platform. So 150 bucks a month, you can talk to them once a month with all of them together. So that's, so short answer is have a process, break the ice, put them on a pro, you know, system, then have a communication plan so you can talk to them all the time. And, and all answer. of these are on uh, recorded and upload, bleh, boy, I can't talk, uploaded on our YouTube channel. So I'll put the link to the YouTube channel in there in a minute. And just for clarification, the mentorship program is 20,000 and it is for one year. And our goal is that this is a pathway to partnership. This isn't like where you keep, you got to keep paying to play. You're now a partner um, and you'll grow with us and be able to do massive things. So it's really, the, the goal is, and I call it, watch the sausage get made. So versus saying, hey, come to a bunch of webinars, go to a YouTube channel, download, learn, think. Um, ours is much different. It's much more of a working environment where you're able to, to get everything. I'm going to do one more quick share at the end, and then we're going to continue with our questions. But I just want to make sure that everybody knows that if you miss <laughs> the Horizon investment, this is going to be you. I love that one. All right. So book a call with somebody at Massive Capital. Um, that's going to be you if you miss out on our first deal for this year. It's going to be a great one. Um, I know the area very well. Uh, so anyways, I had to. I had to show my, I, I'm the guy who makes the funny graphics, although I don't make them, but my VA does that. Uh, so, so do you want to answer Jim's question? Because a little bit yeah. like, like Massive Capital is not a rule-based organization. It's, it's, a, it's a bunch of crazy people doing massive things. Um, uh, and, and yes, if you do something dishonest or whatever, you're, you're gone, right? We're not doing anything. But our goal is to find people that want to go out there and kick butt right alongside of us. So, so thank you, Trevor. So for us, it's the, the human part comes in a lot. So what we look for in our mastermind is you have a good heart. Uh, you know how to and handle your or take care of your friends, left or right, whatever the case might be. And then we look at the money. And uh, we don't start from the money side of it. So we try not to compete uh, with each other. Uh, we, we strongly believe of an honor code. So in our Monday call, within our ops call, we bring in all the deals that we have. We share with everybody. Our ask is that if you think you're competing, let us know and we'll work it out. And then we kind of go from there. So we don't, we don't do that. So it gets interesting. I'll give an example. We have a friend, I have a good friend. He works at a different organization. So last year, first three quarters, 100% of the offers she made in Houston, he competed with me, with Massive, 100%. And, and, and we know it and it's fun. So what we do, we talk and ask, hey, are you, are you doing an offer? He was like, yeah, I am, are you? I was like, yeah, then we'll give you some base level and a thing. And then as the race continues, if I fail, then I'll drop off. I'll give him all of my information that I assumed. And if he fails, then he's going to give me all the information, right? And that gets fun. And often, and then after that, what happened is we became, you know, we have high regard for each other. Then we become friends. Now we're doing deals. Now he's looking for deals for Massive. We're looking for, and Massive is looking deals for them, right? So back to the point, it's, you got to have that, I know the playful mindset uh, so you can kind of help out each other. And Jim, yeah, a version of that is right. Um, oh, 100%, uh, Renee. And that's the whole idea that you can go uh, by yourself, do everything, but for us, you get right there. You just have to take the bite, right? So we're doing, we have, and our goal is to do eight to 10 deals a year. And we want to do the deals with everybody. And we have, and our partners here, and they have done almost all the deals we have done last year. Right, that's what we do. We get you started, and we we come in, and we put you on the fire right away on the spot. So yes, uh, it's it's that a lot of the things that gets done. That's why we say you don't have to go and build your relationship right away after the cold. You can say I've been working with Massive, or we can do the introduction for you, or we can even take you with us to get to that point. 
Yes, hundred oh, percent. that's yeah, right. Fact, thank you. It, let's let's have one of our all stars participants, Miss Liz. She's an all star. Yes. Hi, everybody. Uh, yeah. So again. Yeah, I'll share a little bit about my experience. Um, number one, the tools. We, I, you know, we used to send emails through Gmail. Um, we used to, I used to have a, a MailChimp account. Um, you know, I had about eight different tools that I would use. Now with Massive, we have everything in house. Um, it's just phenomenal. But like, if, if you can read my. And Jasmine, maybe we can stop recording now and Facebook Live too. Just, yes. Okay. So at least I'm not the only one with difficult as today <laughs> okay not to worry so she'll, she'll be able to talk she's never short of words when she's on the our calls so this is this is an abnormal but again our, the goal here is to create a community of people that are doing massive things in my back now you are okay. yes awesome Liz. Oh my God. sorry guys sorry, sorry. So the biggest thing is to be able to sit with the, the principals and do some underwriting. Um, you know, we talk with brokers, we're coached along the way of every piece of the deals. And so we've gone from 400 doors as passive to now we have um, those still those 400 doors and another 400 doors as GPs. So we've really ramped it up this year and it all goes to massive capital. It's they are, they are our partners. And so I can't say enough about it. It's been, been life-changing. So thank you, Massive, for sure. Well, thank you, Liz. Sure. Uh, Liz, I think thank you, right? I mean, we're lucky. Class. We're very fortunate with the good set of people that we hang out with, right? Yeah. Uh, no, no, so, yep. Yeah. No, thank you for that one.